Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. What's up, friends? This is Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, and I have a video I put together here right off the top of my head, um, as I do always, about uh, APRS. I've been wanting to make a video about APRS for a while. A very underused or underloved feature of ham radio that is open to everybody as a licensed operator that can be very beneficial in several situations. APRS stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System. Okay, if you're familiar with packet radio, it's uh, right along the lines of that. Back in the day, uh, packet radio was a big thing. And uh, with the internet, packet has gone away some. There's still some operating networks. But uh, if you're familiar with APRS, it is not what a lot of people tell me. Well, that well, what good is that? It's just for watching your buddy going up the interstate with his vehicle and how fast he's going on a map. That's not what it was designed for. Uh, APRS was developed by Bob Bruninga, WB4APR. And it was, uh, if you sum it up in a nutshell to someone asking, it says right here, APRS is a digital communications information channel for ham radio. As a single national channel, it gives the mobile ham a place to monitor for 10 to 30 minutes in any area at any time to capture what is happening in ham radio in the surrounding area with announcements, bulletins, messages, alerts, weather, and of course a map. So picture everybody operating VHF, UHF in the world is also sending and receiving information at the same time about their local area. And then you go to a map, which I'll show you the map website, and you can see it all real time. And uh, But, you know, APRS, for the people that do know what this is, is not a vehicle tracking system, okay? Um, it's a two-way tactical real-time digital communication system between all assets and a network sharing information about everything going on in the local area. Biggest thing you'd probably benefit from, hurricanes, disasters, natural disasters, hiking, search and rescue, this can be a very beneficial thing. It's got a lot more than just a map. I mean, you can text message from radio to radio. You can email from the microphone or DTMF keypad of an APRS radio right on the front of the radio. You can send an email to anybody. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. And now with other systems implemented, I'll show you a page of a user that made a way that you can send and receive messages from your APRS radio or device. When I say device, I'll show you that. Uh, to a cell phone and from a cell phone to the radio. So imagine you're in an area with no cell service and you're really into search and rescue or emergency operations. You can, with a the help of the APRS network, get a message to a cellular network. We'll show you that. Looking on the right here to start with this, uh, a map of the world. And you'll see that different geographic areas have different operating frequencies, okay? But for the most part, if you're in North America, you're using 144.390. Everybody on APRS in North America is using 144.390. And they're all tied together with digipeters. What is a digipeter? A digipeter is basically like a repeater that passes the digital traffic back and forth. So it hears your digital traffic from your device to there and rebroadcasts it to everybody else. Or it gates it to the internet from RF, from your radio, to the digipeter, and then to the internet, depending on how the system's set up. But uh, I'm just touching on the website here because this is a very useful place to go, APRS.org. And let's go into the website that you'll look at everybody operating, and then I'll break it down. All right. So um, you would just go to APRS.FI. That's the site I like to go to. There are several. This one, to me, seems like the best, for my opinion. Okay, and uh, zoom this out, and what you're going to find as you go zoomed out farther is every station that's participating in APRS in the world and their activity. Now, this website tonight was having issues. If I tried to zoom out to the world, it was not showing anything. So we'll just show you the U.S. for now. The, the areas in red would be populated, uh, heavy traffic on APRS, and the, the purple and light shades of blue would be less traffic and then of course the white would be no traffic at all there may be availability there just nobody there i mean how many people in the middle of montana are going to be on aprs right 
Uh, if it sends a packet, it's probably not going to show up unless it sends so many of them. But you get the idea. The whole, almost the whole United States, and and if I again, if the site was operating correctly, you'd see the entire world has uh, APRS capability. I'll zoom in here to uh, Florida. All right, I'll go to my area in Florida, and what you'll notice when this map populates, and it takes a little bit. I do have uh, 100 meg internet, but it takes a while to load this page because of all the data on here. You'll see each individual station, okay, and um, these are all reporting to the digipeters, and then the digipeters in this situation are, they call it gate, G-A-T-E, they're gating them to the internet so for the site. Uh, a lot of blue dots, the blue dots would be weather stations, okay. So weather stations, just by clicking on it, will show you the call sign, K9FHP, the location, uh, the uh, well, the locations on the map here, uh, and the temperature, the humidity, the pressure in millibars, the the wind out of the, you know the direction, all that. We'll show you on the weather, and that could be very useful for Skywarn weather spotters. I'm a Skywarn member myself, uh, but looking at this, given that the instrumentation on that person's weather station is correct, you can get an idea of conditions um, if you have a major storm coming through or tornado, you know, in a certain part of the country that has tornadoes, you can check out different weather stations. Also on here, you can see uh, repeaters. You know, everybody's looking at, well, where's that repeater located? If that repeater is set up to beacon on APRS like this one is in Melbourne, 146.85, you can see about where that repeater is, all right? And um, a lot, what I've found is all the repeaters that used to be here, until they went to the Fusion Network, the, the Yaesu Fusion repeaters, um, they have to really tie that in, and nobody seems to have done that yet with the Fusion repeaters. Um, but anyways, uh, majority of repeaters will show up on here, and you can click on it, and you can see the, the frequency, the call sign. Uh, where's the call sign at? W4MLB. Um, no tone, it says tone off, but it'll tell you the PL tone, 107.2. Uh, the range, it says 30 miles. This one down here says range 44.9 miles. Uh, the net is Thursday at 7 p.m. for the Platinum Coast Amateur Radio Society. All right, And the antenna and how much power it's putting out. Uh, it could be useful if you're looking for repeaters. And again, my area here is not that, well, I, I take that back, between... Uh, well, Basso here and Vero, there's like 12 repeaters. Nine of them are, are digital capable, but, uh, uh, you know, this isn't nothing like New York City, okay? So uh, I could also go and see, you know, uh, a, a fixed user here, WA4ASJ. This is uh, Bud and uh, any River Emergency Coordinator, I think. And uh, he's running UIView32, which is another software uh, platform that I won't get into today. But uh, that's a fixed station. And then you have, you go down farther here. Let's say we'll go down here to Fort Lauderdale, okay? And you'll start to see other stuff like K4PKT-3. Now, the dash 3 or dash 9 or dash 7, these are what you call SSIDs. The weather stations or fixed stations do not have them. But... Uh, something like Dash 3, if you Google it, you can find the APRS SSIDs, and these are each individual unique station has, for instance, I am KJ4YZI, but on APRS, I'm KJ4YZI Dash 7 if I'm using a handheld, or Dash 9 if I'm using a mobile, such as a D700 Kenwood, or uh, a, a Yaesu FTM400, or um, Dash 12 or 13. There's a lot of different I think there's 15 of them, and some of them are for balloons, some of them are for digipeters, some of them are for handhelds, but you can see on here, this is with the, with the icon and the dash 3, that's your digi in West Palm Beach, and um, this here would be a mobile, KG4CWC-9. Now notice when you hover over him, you can see he's going through this digipeter, so assume that everybody in this general area is beaconing through this digipeter. Now, there might be several others unlisted, but this digipeter is responsible to beacon to the next one and to the next one, and it's a, 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 you know, a chain effect here, and also to the Internet. So all the stations are going through this tower, which is picking up the digital signals. The KG4CWC-9 is a mobile station, um, 
and he's uh well he's not mobile right now big dodge but uh you know if he was mobile you'd see um you know uh, uh, 65 miles an hour headed north or whatever uh, and you could put a status on her. You could put just hanging around or on my day off, uh, in route, in, in communication. You know, if you're hurricane situation here, if you're in a hurricane situation or natural disaster, you can set statuses in route or off duty or, or what have you. Tactical, you know. Um, here's a tower here. This is, I'm not sure what that is. That's a new one. But that's right off of 441 there. So that's some kind of tower there. I'm not sure what that's for. But anyways, we go down here and check this out. I used to live in this area. So all these boats, okay, these aren't necessarily ham radio operators at all. But they're using the same packet reporting system while out to sea so that they can be tracked. And if in an emergency, someone can see where they're at. But look, uh, we have uh, Independence, okay, is 186 meters long. That must be a cargo ship. Uh, with 32 meters with a draft of 11 meters um, the the uh, numbers on here the call okay it's a tanker Port Everglades so you may not need to know that but it's there you know you'll also see airplanes going through that are uh, beaconing but what's funny is uh, Jim, uh, Jim W2JKD in my area flies his little uh, Cessna whatever it is on a small plane and uh, the Piper aircraft and he'll be beaconing at, at 100 milliwatts, and you'll see his entire track around where he's going up in uh, Vero Beach. It's pretty cool to watch. But, um, you know, if you say had an emergency situation and, um, you know, National Guard or your uh, emergency operations center, your local EOC ham radio was deployed here, you can see where that's at and see all the people that are volunteering or helping around that with the Red Cross or whatever in a situation like that. What's funny is when you... When you watch on um, on uh, Dayton, Ohio, uh, Dayton Ham Fest, you should have seen how many people you can go. The closer you got to Ohio, you see all these ham radio operators heading to the same spot. That was kind of funny. Um, but, okay, so enough of the map. You got the idea, right? But let me show you some of the other features on it. Um, first, we'll get in the, into the devices, um, radios and stuff, uh, and uh, devices that aren't radios. And then I'll show you how easy it is to send an email and uh, how fast it is and, and some other stuff there and what it sounds like on the network. So this is part one. Let's get into part two. Before I get into part two, one thing I did forget to mention, if, if you're asking, you say, well, what if I don't have internet in a natural disaster? There are ways like using programs such as UIView32 or, or other programs um, or, uh, you know, this, these stations I'll show you are are showing up on your radio or your app on your phone or whatever you're using. So you don't have to go here on uh, the internet. You know, you can everything that comes in RF can be placed on a map on certain software. A lot of the software is older, but uh, it can show up on the map without you having to go to the internet because basically it would only show you what it hears on RF. So in your in your vicinity, none of this would show up over here. Only the stuff in your general vicinity would show up on RF on your map. But yes, it is possible without the internet and visiting this website if you didn't have internet to use something like this. Um, and as well as D-Star, now we got uh, D-Star are not doing it over RF, but the D-Star network is gating it from the D-Star network, taking your call sign and position with your GPS and putting it on the map and it won't have a dash 10 or a dash 5. It'll just say the call sign and it shows up when you click on it through D-Star. Uh, so D-Star is also applying uh, to the to the uh, APRS map here. So let's get into, into the devices. What's that sound like to you? Remember the old 56K modem days? That's all the digital traffic on the APRS network. And you can see the stations popping in there uh, with the call sign as it's received. This is the RF side of it, okay? And remember, 144.390 in North America. Every station that's transmitting their location and any information to the APRS network on a digipeter is being picked up on RF on my radio. 
all right? Um, I'm connected to an antenna right now, a vertical, because I'm a little bit far from the, from the digipeter. And you heard that ding. I'll show you what that is in a minute. So this is an FT1D, okay? To show you the handhelds that have APRS built in, this is one of many, all right? Kenwood has a long, a lot of uh, radios that have APRS built in. It seems like Kenwood, I think, was the first. Um, Yesu has stuck with it. And a lot of people say, why do they keep putting it in these new radios? Because people are still using it. You can hear the traffic on this. This is just in my little dead area of Indian River County. There's still people using APRS. So I praise Yesu for putting that in there. Um, you go to a bigger city, you're going to hear a lot more traffic on here. And what you're hearing is, again, all the digital packets of information being sent from radios to digipeters, and then the digipeters rebroadcasting them to everybody else. Um, because I'm not listening. The radio is really not, it's, it's listening from the digipeter. Because you're probably not going to hear some guy 40 miles north on simplex so on this frequency. So it's listening to the digipeter, which is usually several hundred feet in the air, broadcasting a lot more power. Um, so if you go, so this FT1D, I don't have my 2D here. It's on loan. A lot of people are checking it out. Uh, but the 1D I like because this is right along the lines of the VX7 or the uh, VX8R. VX8GR, VX8DR, um, and the FT1D. This is the Fusion handheld with APRS, but all those radios I just mentioned um, have the same similar structure with the ASU, okay? So I can go into function here, APRS. Now this is the station list. As stations are picked up, remember we showed you on the map, the stations that are picked up on the map, this is the RF of what this radio heard. You can see what time it came in, the station call, the SSID um, and such and you can just go right in there and see each one KG4YZY that's almost almost like my call sign uh, how many miles you are from them once your GPS locks my GPS hasn't locked yet um, but uh, it will show you how far away you are and which direction okay now we'll go back and I'll go into the messages now this this video is not designed to show you how to use this on APRS refer to the manual but I'm just showing you as an example the APRS message I can send messages to other users on APRS you see I sent myself a message KJ4YZI-7 that was sending a message to me for a test but if you're um, N1 Bravo Echo Echo-9 I can send you a text message it'll pop up on your screen all right um, so what I want to show you though is one cool feature that not a lot of people know about is I can actually go and send an email through APRS. So if you can see this, when you send it to, the two would represent uh, the call sign you want to send it to. In this case, the two is email. That's going to be an email server. And then the, the next, the, in the body of the message, it's only like 68 characters, but in the body of the message, you want to put the email address first, and then a space, and then your message. Now, you don't have a lot to write a paragraph, but you can email somebody, get on 444.800, or get on uh, wherever, where I'm listening on this frequency, or uh, we're in route, or we'll be there in 20 minutes, whatever. But you can email that without cell service. Um, very cool feature and what happens is once you send this it's going to beacon uh, that noise or that data that you hear okay uh, it's gonna send it out as a message if I do it manually um, let's see I wonder if, okay but it's gonna sound like this okay it's gonna send the traffic to the digipeter and that's gonna go through the internet and then what you're gonna get on the other end if it came in on my tablet, which I know it did, uh, is an email from your APRS network. And there it is. APRS, it comes from APR mes APRS message from KJ4YZI-7 test. Okay? Uh, and it shows you the I gate it went through, KJ4ERJ-1. That's an I gate strictly listening to RF and gating it to the internet. Um, so that's email. And now I can't send this back and reply it's not going to come back to this radio however there is another method of doing that and this is what I want to show you uh, let's see if I could put a bubble somewhere on the screen for the link and then we'll go back and show you the uh, 
the uh, well, I'll put the link in the, in the description. There's a a, uh, a Facebook group, and I guys, I want you guys to like this group or page. It's APRS or let's see, SMS GTE, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Function APRS message. Okay. Check this out, SMSGTE. This is a fellow, a VE station, Victor Echo 9, I think it is, Victor Echo 3, uh, who developed a way to text message from your radio to a phone and from the phone to a radio, okay? He's on Facebook, he has a website, uh, but check out, I'll put the link in the description, SMS GTE. And imagine if you don't have cell service and you can APRS message to a cell phone and then the cell phone can message you back given that you have APRS uh, range in your area. That is pretty cool. I, I, I am in no affiliation with him whatsoever, but I do see he runs on donations and he's really trying to make this more popular. So check him out. If you feel like you can use this service and you've used it before, send him a donation because it's people like that that keep this hobby interesting and the brains like that that keep uh, other methods and modes in, in use here when other people can't. So check out uh, the Facebook group SMS GTE. To go into it further with uh, the SMS GTE, basically we'll go into messages create new message okay so you would do SMS GTE as the two okay um, that's two you're sending it to the SMS gateway before the, the before the number you want to put an at symbol the at symbol is in there some people have said they don't know where it is it's right before the capital A so at and then we'll do seven uh, six four one four three six four one two two and then we'll do a space uh, where's the space at space and then uh, oh we can just text it T E W or X T okay so two SMS GTE with the at phone number and then text or test okay and then you would send it now when you send it what you're gonna get on your phone is something that looks like this all right so that was me uh, kj4yzi test and then later on I was testing back here um, back to the phone so you would reply back to this uh, message and apparently the creator says it'll hold the conversation for like 24 hours and then, um, you know, you only get the number when you do it over RF. So there is no spamming. You have to do it over RF to the DigiPeter. But um, a pretty cool concept to be able to text message back and forth from a phone to your uh, APRS enabled radio. So that's all cool. What if you don't have a radio that does APRS? Well, let's go to the next step here. I'm going to shut this off. And we're going to head over to the next device here. This here is something I got about two and a half years ago. Uh, I won't tell you much on it because I contacted the user and um, I guess he didn't want any kind of publicity from my videos. He didn't appreciate whatever. So uh, this is from the company Mobile Linked, M-O-B-I-L-I-N-K-D. Uh, and... Um, so Mobile Link developed this board, which is based on Arduino, Arduino, Arduino. And basically here's the Bluetooth chip and uh, the battery. And this was in the beginning stages when I bought this, it didn't even come with a case. So I had to uh, make my own case or that you were supposed to improvise. And now they have uh, 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 cases and stuff that are come, you know, that go with it. And there's a little cable that you'd get with your device for the radio you need. Now what's cool about this is I could take something like a Bowphone or a Luton 7 watt handheld, a 40 something dollar handheld, and guess what? I can plug this into the mobile link. I can plug this end into my radio, okay? Now what this is doing is enabling your little $40 China radio 
to become an APRS radio. This has the KISS TNC modem built in with Bluetooth. Why do you need Bluetooth? Let me show you. We're going to fire this up. I'm going to unplug this. I'll take this off like this. But now what's cool, and I'm not sure about the price point on this anymore. It's been a while. But the, uh, the mobile linked TNC, there's also an app called APRS Droid. APRS Droid is not made by the mobile linked manufacturer. It's its own uh, application. However, uh, APRS Droid pairs up on Bluetooth with this device. And as receive stations come in with your handheld, they would populate in the list. You can click on the map. You can see uh, the map on here, all the stations that you received. You can uh, click on the station, get information. You can also uh, go to messages. And now I could message just like a phone or a tablet right on here and click on the message, send a message to uh, a call sign, text a phone from here, uh, whatever. So um, APRS Droid is also uh, available with the, uh, the device I'm going to show here you next. Here is another method of APRS. Now this is from radioddity.com. This shows KJ4YZI-12. If you can see that. Now this is a standalone mobile eye gate RF and GPRS dual mode tracker. So what this does is give you the ability okay, to use it with an ICOM, a Yesu, and there's newer models in this. This is a couple years old. Radio data port, okay, it runs on battery 7 to 12 volts, so you can power this off your cigarette lighter. Actually, the Bofeng cigarette lighter does work with that. This has a GPS included with it. There's your GPS hockey puck, okay, and that's magnetic. And you can connect with a special cable that they sell with this to a, again, Bofeng or Luton radio. And you can visually see on here your GPS specs uh, and other stations that pop in here. Now, it's not touch screen, but it is a cool little device because you can plug from here right into an ICOM and it'll set the ICOM to 144.390. And this thing will automatically send all that right out on 144.390 with this. So there's, there's multiple different ways for APRS. What's cool about this is, and I haven't got to test it, but you can actually use a SIM card a uh, what do you call it a uh, G uh, GSM not a GSM but a, just a regular data SIM card in here in uh, here's the GSM antenna and you could actually beacon over cellular you know if it costs you one cent per megabyte or whatever it is you can beacon over cellular in the most remote areas where you don't have APRS coverage so there's three different options but there's a bunch there's uh, Bionics, there's Tiny Track, there's all kinds of different different ways of enjoying APRS, but APRS is just more than tracking somebody's car going down the road. Messaging, search and rescue, emergency operations, there's a lot. Uh, I hope this video, I know it was long, but I hope it made some sort of uh, interest to you to check out and uh, I have a couple videos on I didn't make a video on this but I have a video on some other things the mobile uh, the uh, APR uh, AVRT5 and 6 so check those out all the links are in the description rate subscribe thumbs up comment share facebook.com slash ham radio concepts more videos on the way 73 from KJ4YZI dash 7